Hey everybody, so this is going to be a very brief video, hopefully, on the basic premise of evolutionary biology, all right, the, the very basic premise, all right, hopefully this is going to be reviewed from your high schools, uh, science classes, um, so hopefully this will be nothing to it, but this is the beginning of a series of videos where I lay out some of the basic assumptions of evolutionary theory, um, so as uh, to make you know, the incorporations of evolutionary theory a little bit easier to track and a little bit easier to follow as we go through the course, all right? Uh, social psychology had, was one of the first of the experimental psychology fields to kind of really embrace uh, evolutionary biology since its uh, resurgence in the field in the 80s. Uh, other fields have begun to jump on uh, and start using evolutionary biology in their reasoning as well, including clinical psychology, a little bit of cognitive psychology, developmental psychology, but social psychology was one of the first. So here in this video, I'm just going to talk about the basic premise, the basic concept of evolution, okay? So let's start with what is evolution? Evolution is simply change over time, all right? Now, there are many mechanisms and there are different kinds of uh, ways that that change can occur. And the theory of evolutionary biology tries to lay out the ways in which those, in which that change can occur. And in general, there are three types of selection. And I'm going to share with you my screen so you can see those three listed. All right, so here are our three basic types of selection. A selection is simply the uh, process by which traits move, and or move is probably a bad way to say it, the process by which traits get carried over from one generation to the next. Now, Darwin, in his first book, all right, The Origin The origin of species, all right, begins by detailing the fact that <clears throat> we have changed and modified species through artificial breeding programs. We've created species that did not exist prior to those breeding programs. Dogs did not exist in the wild prior to the intervention of man. And so when uh, the cow didn't exist until the intervention of man, all right? We bred certain cow predecessors until we have what we now have, uh, until the modern, until we had the modern day cow. So in these circumstances, all right, we go from a wolf to guys like this, all right? My little data here is eight years old, all right? And he is, in a very distant way, a distant, uh, uh, sorry, baby, sorry to disturb you, uh, descendant of a wolf, all right? Shih Tzus, like data, although he's a Shih Tzu Yorkie, all right? They didn't exist in the wild, all right? Um, dogs didn't exist in the wild until humans started breeding them. And we created, uh, data here would have a very rough time of uh, breeding with a wolf, all right? And there are some breeds of dogs that cannot reproduce on their own anymore, all right? So, um, this kind of process where man chooses what traits pass to the next generation, that's called artificial selection, all right? Because we, as man are artificially selecting what traits get carried over to the next generation, all right? And so Darwin starts with artificial, artificial selection in his book, all right? He starts with, we have shaped these species over time. So he starts with the fact that it does happen because we've done it, and then goes into his argument that, well, what if pressures created by the environment 
inadvertently shape what traits get carried on to the next generation. What if certain organisms are better able to reproduce because they're, they have some kind of trait or a series of traits that make them, that give them a longer life in certain environments? If they can live longer, then naturally they're going to reproduce more. And so there's going to be more organisms, more members of that species with that individual's traits in the next generation. And as long as the environment doesn't change, those traits will continue to be beneficial. And so those individuals with those traits will have more offspring of their own in the next generation than will those without those traits. And over many generations, those traits that were beneficial in that environment become more numerous in the, pop, in the species as a whole. Whereas any trait that might have been harmful will become less and less numerous, all right? And so in this way, over many generations, the natural environment can choose which traits pass on to the next generation. That's natural selection. So already we've gone through two ways in which change happens over time. We've already gone over two ways in which evolution can occur. So now let's hit a third one. And this is more of a direct way. With artificial selection, we have some other entity, us, choosing what traits move into the next generation. We, we, we choose which traits, which organisms get to breed and reproduce because uh, uh, we like whatever traits they have, all right? So it's beneficial to the reproduction. Those traits are beneficial to the reproduction because we want those traits in the next generation. With natural selection, traits get passed on to the next generation because they help organisms with those traits breed because they live longer, all right? With sexual selection, it's more of a direct path, all right? Organisms with traits that the opposite sex prefers or organisms with traits that help them compete for opposite sex uh, partners more effectively. Those traits get passed on to the next generation because they give the organism greater access to potential mates, all right? So if, well, we'll, we'll talk about the classic example of peacocks and peahens, right? Peahens love brilliant, uh, colorful plumage. We know this because the, the more brilliant and colorful the plumage, the more uh, the more brilliant and uh, colorful a peacock's plumage, the more mates they get, all right? So a peacock has the, the bigger, the brighter, the more colorful its tail, the more mates it gets. The peahen prefers that. And so more peahens are attracted to peacocks with more cl color, colorful plumage than uh, are than they are to peacocks with more dull plumage, okay? Uh, more uh, drabbly colored plumage. So here we have a trait, brilliant, colorful plumage, being preferred by the other sex, all right? Now, that's one kind of way uh, sexual selection occurs, all right? But sexual selection can also occur through, because remember I said, if certain traits are preferred by the opposite sex, then those with those preferred traits, they get to reproduce more. So those traits move on into the next generation. Remember the second way I said this can happen is that some traits may help uh, the, the possessors of those traits compete more successfully uh, for uh, partners. So you may have noticed that in almost every mammalian species, all right, including humans, males are bigger physically than females, all right? Well, that's because in the majority of uh, mammalian species, bigger meant that you could overpower your, ri your sexual rivals. If you could overpower your sexual rivals and chase them off, then you get, for, for most mammalian species, that means you get more access maybe to their mates or to mates that would have preferred them, if you can outcompete your competitors, then you have a greater chance. If you're bigger, 
and therefore can outcompete your competitors, then you have a bigger chance of getting access to op opposite sex mates. And so this is an example of how the trait of size, right, is, uh, helps you to outcompete your competitors, giving you access to the opposite sex. So you see, in this situation, how traits get passed to the next generation is far more direct. Those traits that the other sex prefers gets, uh, uh, those traits that the other sex prefers makes people, makes members of the species with those traits more reproductively successful, all right? With natural selection, those who live longer have more chances to reproduce, all right? So that makes them more reproductively successful. With artificial selection, we choose who breeds because we, uh, we choose the animals with the traits we want. So in all of these, artificial selection, where man chooses what traits get passed on, natural selection, where survival in an environment chooses which traits get passed on, and sexual selection, where our sexual partners choose who, uh, what traits get passed on, all right, in all of these situations, in all of these types of selection, some, some uh, scenario, some situation is driving which traits get passed on. And what determines which traits get passed on is whether or not those traits help reproduction. And that's the key piece of all types of evolution, whether it's artificial selection, natural selection, or sexual selection, differential reproduction. All right, so you may have heard of this idea of classic fitness or survival of the fittest. Well, fittest just means most successful at reproducing. All right, so organisms with traits that are better able to reproduce, either because the organisms, humans that control them, like them, whether those traits help them survive in the environment longer or whether sexual partners prefer those traits. Regardless of the reason, if those traits help you reproduce, then those traits get passed on to the next generation. They are selected for, all right? But ultimately, what makes a person fit, what makes an organism, any organism, fit in evolutionary terms is how sex successfully they are uh, able to reproduce. All right. All right, guys, that is it for this video. Hopefully that gives you a good kind of understanding of the three basic types of evolution. Now, in with humans, obviously, we don't, eugenics is considered immoral, with good reason, I would say. Um, but because of that, we don't see artificial selection with humans. We only see it with livestock, or animals that we try to domesticate, like dogs, all right, um, <clears throat> and cats, um, for you cat lovers out there. Uh, but natural selection and sexual selection are very much still uh, at play, all right? Uh, and so in the next couple of videos, I will be talking about each type of uh, selection natural and sexual in more detail. Um, so as always, so that's it for this video. So as always, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to send them my way. Uh, but if not, I hope you have a great one and I'll see you later on.